Okay, so about three years ago, I did a video on these Maker Discs, which were the easiest way to set up a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, I've got one inside here. This is a Compute Module 4 inside here. So this is a little NVMe drive, a 2242 size. This is the longer 2280, a couple of SD cards and an SSD. Well, times have changed and obviously the Raspberry Pi 5 is really focused on NVMe drives. So Cytron have sent me another box and this one is full of NVMe drives. So in the box, I had 2280 drives, so the longer drives in 128, 256 and also 512. And I also had the 2242, the smaller drives, which are also in 128, 256 and 512. So the reason NVMe is so important on the Raspberry Pi 5 is it's much faster for data transfer. So you can see we've got the PCIe slot, which is exclusive to the Raspberry Pi 5. And there are loads of solutions for PCIe to NVMe. Uh, the one I mostly use at the moment is this 52 Pi one because it's in this case. And uh, I also use this 3D printed clip because I'm often changing the drive in it. But I have a much longer PCIe cable being sent to me, so I might do some more builds soon. Now the reason I'm saying this is the easiest way to install an operating system is because they come pre-written with Raspberry Pi OS on them. So all you have to do is plug them in and start them up and you should have an operating system. This is particularly useful for people who don't have another computer they can use to set up a Raspberry Pi for the first time. Now I have got a tutorial on setting up a Raspberry Pi with just an Android phone and it also works with a Chromebook as well. But otherwise you're gonna need some sort of computer to get it started, but not with MakerDisk. It's a bit different with Raspberry Pi 4 because after a while they introduced a way of setting up a Raspberry Pi 4 with just an internet connection. So all you need to do on a Raspberry Pi 4 is have a network connection, a mouse and keyboard, HDMI and USB-C, no storage in there at the moment. Switch it on. And we get this screen, install an OS on this Raspberry Pi, press and hold shift to start net install. So what it does now is it downloads the installer and you can write an operating system. So really, really good, but we don't have that luxury on Raspberry Pi 5. When we start up a Raspberry Pi 5, we get this screen, which is quite useful for setting up a Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, you can see on the top right hand corner, there is a QR code. If I hold up my phone to it, I can tap on the website and it will take us to a page that tells us how to install it. But it is saying Windows, Mac OS or Ubuntu. As I say, you can also do it with a Chromebook and an Android phone. I've got separate tutorials on that. But MakerDisk should do away with all this because the operating system is already installed. But we have had changes to the bootloader over time with the Raspberry Pi 5. So this is currently showing 22nd of the first 2024, which I think is the oldest bootloader I've got. I've booted up all of my Raspberry Pi 5s. And here's all the EEPROM dates for all of my Pis. Uh, I can show you this one on the Raspad. So this is currently 22nd of the first as well. But the oldest one is this one, which is dated 5th of January. So that's the one I'm gonna use for the tests because Newer updates have been more compatible, so NVMe compatibility has got better and better on the Raspberry Pi 5. So this is an old EEPROM, and you could end up buying a Raspberry Pi 5 with an old EEPROM. So let's see if it works with a Maker Disk. So I've just put a board on this Pi, and I've just tried an operating system I already had running. This is my version of KDE Plasma, which is based on Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, but uh, let's shut this down and let's put the maker disk on and see what happens so let's remove this patriot one and pop this one on i haven't plugged any of the screws in by the way that's why it's got some movement to it it's definitely worth plugging the screws in but obviously i'm just doing this for a test so that's in i'm going to use my little clip i've got a separate little shorts video on this it is really handy so we can pop that down and close it up so it's nice and neat. And the moment of truth, let's switch it on. And we should get a blue light if it's all successful. And we have, and it looks like it's booting. There you go, and we get the standard Raspberry Pi login, which obviously you can just put all the location and everything else in. 
and that's all booted up fine. Uh, if you want speed tests on these drives, uh, go to CNX Software, and I'll put a link in the description. They've basically gone through and done a test on each, each individual drive, so I don't have to. Uh, but I will do a speed test on this drive. Uh, so if I close this down, press the Windows key and start typing diagnostics, and you can see we get a speed test which is built in. Let's run those tests, and let's see if we're getting Gen 2 or Gen 3 speeds. Copy that. I always do this test three times. Okay, that's the third test. Let's copy it into this text document. And I usually take the fastest random read speed as the one that I'm going to use, which is this one, 51684. Pretty consistent. Let's delete that. And let's save that. And let's have a look in the config. So let's go into root and boot and firmware and then config.txt. So are there any settings in here for NVMe? No, definitely no settings in there for NVMe. So we can speed this up by using PCIe 3. So let's find one of my videos where I would have had it listed. So if I do search for NVMe, it should show up. Yeah, let's try this one. And we need to add this line DT param PCIe X1 underscore gen equals three. So let's do control alt T to get terminal up. And we need to type in sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash firmware forward slash config dot txt. And we just need to add that line in. Doesn't matter where we do it, let's just do it here. Now Gen 3 isn't listed as officially supported on the Pi 5, but I've had no problem every time I've enabled it. I've had much faster speeds, haven't had any issues at all. You can see the reason they wouldn't necessarily put it in on the Maker Disk, but it's very easy to add it. So Control X and Yes to save that and Enter. And then we're going to need to reboot to enable that faster speed. So reboot. And then if we go back into diagnostics and run the tests, yeah, that already looks faster. So if I open this in Gini, I don't know if it's Gini or Genie. I'm sure I've heard people say Gini. Uh, so that's just one test. Yeah, look at the sequential write speed. So we've gone from 397,000 up to 762,000. We've gone from 92,564 to 100,515, and we've gone from 51684 to 53894. So yeah, definitely worth enabling PCIe 3. Obviously, if you get instabilities, uh, you can go back in with Control Alt T to terminal and go back into sudo nano boot firmware.config.txt and just put a hash there. And then if you save that with a hash, that basically means it'll ignore that line but I'm going to leave it on because it's working well for me. I always do the three tests, so let's do the three tests. So you can see the tests side by side there. Definitely benefited from the PCIe 3 speed. And uh, it was thanks to Jeff Geerling's video for, for showing me that setting. I use it on all my NVMe drives and I haven't had any issues. And you do see uh, Maker Disk pop up in Jeff Geerling's videos. So he's obviously been sent some from Cytron. Uh, I've never had an issue with them and I've used them for loads of operating systems and I've used it in lots of different single board computers. So thanks to Cytron for sending them to me. They will definitely be popping up in lots more of my videos. I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.